Welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Kay, and I work at Art Starts as a gallery coordinator and preparator. I started the Explores program three years ago, and I'm excited to bring a version online that can be enjoyed by families across the province. Today, we're going to explore the theme of chance. When studying, working, learning, and making, it is important to have a plan and work carefully and with purpose. But when you're playing and exploring, not having a plan and trying things out to see what happens can be exciting and useful. Experimenting with chance can open us up to new possibilities and ideas and to learn how to be ready and prepared for unexpected situations. If you've never joined us for Explorers in the past, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the three rules or guidelines we like to follow. First is respect. We practice respect for ourselves by listening to how we feel, respect for others by listening and sharing, respect for the land by acknowledging the nations and indigenous people who have served and continue to serve as guardians and stewards of the land, and by doing our best to be respectful guests as we learn and play here. Second is no expectations. Try not to plan too much before trying something today. If we get a picture in our heads about how something should turn out, we can be disappointed with ourselves when it doesn't. Try practicing surprise and always ask, I wonder what will happen if I... Third is that nothing is for keeps. In the gallery in Vancouver, we like to say, take nothing home with you except your experience. But since many of you are at home now, we challenge you to unmake everything you try today. This means... After you're finished trying something, try to disassemble or take it apart so you can use it again for something else. Try not to make any completed thing, and whenever possible, pull from your recycling bin to practice. And if it can still be recycled when you're done, put it back. Trying something new doesn't need to make something for keeps, and that's just what we're practicing today. Let's play a really simple game of chance. Try to find a coin or a die. If you can't find either of these, you could also take a piece of paper and make your own coin or set of dice. Before you do anything, look really close at your coin or die. What do you notice? Look at your object until you think you could describe it with your eyes closed. When you are done really looking at your object, open your eyes again and tell your coin or die what side up you want it to face. Tell it with your voice or your hands or your brain, but command the coin or die to show the face or side or action you want. You could tell it to show the number six, or show the side of the face, often called the head side of the coin. You could tell it you want it to land on its side, or not land on a number. Tell it whatever you want it to do, but only tell it something that is possible. So telling it to start dancing, or to turn into an ice cream is funny to think about, but not going to happen. We want to tell it to do something that could happen. Ready? One, two, three, go! This is an example of playing with chance. Did the coin or die seem to do what you asked it to? If not, try again. Try doing it again and again until it does the thing you told it to, or until you don't want to anymore. Once the coin or die do the thing you want, try and do it again. Chances are that it probably doesn't happen when you ask it to. And that's chance. Even if we want it really, really badly to roll a six or to show up on the head side of the coin, the object we're using can't think for itself. And as long as you're giving up control when you roll or toss the object, you can't predict or guess for sure or with perfect accuracy, what's going to happen. This can be exciting, scary, and frustrating. How did you feel when the die or coin did or didn't do what you wanted to? When it did the thing you wanted, what did you do? And what did you notice? Playing with chance is kind of like when an accident happens, but not really. What they have in common is that you didn't predict, or guess, or plan for what happened, or the outcome. You didn't design the result. 
But what's different with playing with chance or exploring chance is that you are open for it to happen. You're making a plan to take a chance. When we accidentally spill a glass of milk or trip, we didn't plan for either of those things to happen. And we didn't plan to have to clean up the milk or get a band-aid for our scraped knee. So let's intentionally play with chance together. Let's be ready for whatever could happen when we plan to explore chance. For this activity, let's get a piece of paper, any size, and remember, you can always get something out of the recycling bin. Some glue, paste, or a glue stick works great. If you don't have any glue or paste, you could also use some water. More paper, colored paper, or paper you color. Take some of the colored or extra paper. This is always my favorite part. Start ripping up some of this paper and make a pile. I love ripping paper. Sometimes you can be really intentional and slow about ripping paper, and it's almost like cutting. But for today, let's just rip up the paper. How does it make you feel to rip paper? Once you have a pile, put it to the side. Now take your first piece of paper and put glue all over it. If you don't have glue, you could lightly wet the paper with a spray bottle or paintbrush. Now it's time to play with chance. Pick up some of the ripped pieces and hold them over your paper. Count one, two, three, and then drop the pieces. Don't touch the pieces after they land. It was placed there by chance and we don't want to move it. Keep dropping pieces onto the page and when you have dropped enough, pick up the paper and tap it gently to see which papers stick and which don't. If you're using water, you could also add a bit of water to your pieces so they stick lightly to the paper too. Take a look at your paper. What happened? Are you tempted or feel like you really want to move or reposition one of the pieces? Try not to if you can. This can be really hard if you start to see something you like on the page. Maybe the paper is starting to make a pattern or form a picture you like. That's really cool when it happens, but instead of touching it, Try sitting on your hands and just looking at the page. What do you notice? How do you feel? For some people, this activity can be really fun and exciting because anything can happen and you get to see the results pasted on your page. But for some people, this activity can be really stressful or difficult because they want to touch or make decisions about where the paper goes on the page. However you feel, Let's remember that not everyone feels the same way when things happen without design, and we can practice respect by checking in and sharing how we feel with each other while we practice this game. There are lots of ways you can explore chance, and I've just suggested a few. Be sure to download our resource one pager this week for additional questions you can ask each other, another activity, and some words you can use to challenge yourself when you're playing with chance. And don't forget, when you're all done playing and exploring, try to take things apart and put them away again so that the only thing that is left behind are the pictures in your brain. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. If you're watching this in August 2020, we'll be hosting a live art making session on Chance this weekend where you can make at home and ask questions or watch me practice too. Check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Art Starts. I hope to see you then.